Hello, welcome back to the next installment in our series of video tutorials on the introduction to the IDF to PH toolkit. Uh, my name is Ed May with Building Type and glad to have you back with us. Uh, we're going to pick up with our videos here right where we left off. We're going to continue developing our, um, our, our, our little project here and building out some additional detail uh, and showing some features of the IDF to PH toolkit as we go. If you um, have not been following along, if you're if you're just jumping into the videos now, uh, that's fine. Um, uh, hopefully, hopefully everything will be um, uh, clear as, as as we go in. But um, if you're if you're following along with us, hopefully you have a working connection between your Rhino, Grasshopper, and PHPP documents at this point. So um, if you if you if you don't have that working and you uh, want to learn more about that, you can certainly go um, check out some of those earlier videos about how we we set up and establish that connection. But um, as you can see on the screen here, I have my I have a, a Rhino document in the upper left, a, a, a Rhino drawing of a, of, a, of a very small little boxy building. This is the building that we've been sort of playing around with as we uh, were exploring the IDF to PH toolkit in the last couple of lectures or uh, videos. Um, on the right hand side, I have my grasshopper definition where we're creating our honeybee zones, adding some windows, and calculating shading factors, creating rooms, um, exporting all of that out to Energy Plus, uh, and then converting that Energy Plus document into a, a PHPP and streaming all of that data into our PHPP Excel document. And in the lower left there, you can see our PHPP document, which is uh, connected to our, our, our Rhino scene uh, live. So as we change things in the Rhino scene, uh, everything changes in our, our PHPP as we as we go there. So again, hopefully, you're, hopefully yours is working as well. Hopefully, you're able to get everything connected up and rigged up, and um, we can continue on here. So in this series of, of videos, I would like to, to start our discussion of the systems for our Passfiles building and our the system configuration options for the IDF to PH toolkit by looking at fresh air ventilation systems. So not heating, not cooling, not dehumidification, fresh air ventilation systems. So the ERV or HRV for your typical passive house project if, if you're doing passive house work uh, through the PHPP. Uh, we'll start by looking at how we build out fresh air ventilation systems and then how we apply those to our zones. Um, in future videos, we'll, we'll take a deeper dive into, we'll look at some of the flow rate uh, configurations. So how do we actually calculate and establish flow rates for the, um, for the, for the fresh air ventilation system and how do those compare and um, uh, how do they align with the Energy Plus um, standard flow rate? Uh, settings, which are which are going to be used by Honeybee um, by default until we until we tell it otherwise. Um, we'll we'll certainly look at some um, uh, some some methods for reconciling the PHPP methods and, and recommendations with the Energy Plus standards and, and defaults. So we'll look at how we can set those in our our Honeybee and Energy Plus model, and then we'll finish up with with some videos dedicated to. Um, uh, air leakage through the envelope, how we can set and, and, and control that, and then um, how we can coordinate some of the internal loads, internal gains, appliances, that kind of thing. Um, we'll talk about the again the differences between PHPP and, and Energy Plus, and sort of a li we'll touch a little bit on on how we can reconcile those things. Although that's a the big subject and um, probably the subject for some some future videos for sure. So in any event, let's get started with our fresh air ventilation system. Fresh air ventilation system, the ERV or the HRV for our passive house building here that we're going to be building. So we want to create a fresh air ventilation system and then apply the fresh air ventilation system to one or more honeybee zones. And the reason we're going to do it that way is it's very common to have a multi-zone Energy Plus model, where if maybe it's a three-story townhouse, each floor is a different zone, or maybe it's north-south zone splitting, um, but maybe you only have one system for the whole home or the whole building. And so it's very common that we build a single system and then apply that system to multiple honeybee zones. And so that's exactly the way we're going to do it here. We're going to build a system using some new IDF to pH components, and we're going to apply that system to various one or more honeybee zones in our, our model. Now, we only have one zone in our model here, so that's a little bit easier, but in, um, in the real world, you'll probably have more than one zone, and uh, so we'll, you would uh, use it in, in that fashion. Either way, we're going to start to add some new components to our grasshopper definition here, and so we have to decide where we're going to put them. Now, they, they can basically, these new components, this fresh air ventilation system, can basically live anywhere before the export to Energy Plus. But I think it makes the most sense to, ins to insert it 
after we've built the rooms and before we export to Energy Plus. So I'm going to uh, give us a little bit more space in our uh, uh, Honeybee definition here. I'm going to zoom in to this Create Interior Rooms and Export to Energy Plus, and I'm going to give us some room in between those for our new fresh air ventilation system. So let me uh, open up a little gap here and let's um, keep our keep our scene uh, nice and clean here uh, and manageable. We'll call this um, uh, fresh. Okay, uh, and let's um, let's go ahead and rename this. So we'll, let's rename this. We'll call this um, fresh air ventilation system. How about that? So this will be the section where we'll do all of our fresh air ventilation configuration and assignment. So um, uh, how are we going to do that? Well, let's let's start by actually taking a look at the PHPP rather than the rather than the grasshopper scene here. So let's go over to our PHPP and let's take a look at what the PHPP wants to see when it comes to fresh air ventilation systems. Now, now hopefully your PHPP looks uh, something like this. You've got good uh, dwell, number of dwelling units and TFA and some results here because you've got all of your envelope um, elements in here. So we're getting heat demand results, um, uh, overheating results, etc. cetera. Um, uh, so um, let's take a look at how fresh air ventilation is done in the PHPP. So if I come down here to the additional vent worksheet, the additional vent worksheet, um, this is where we're going to configure and set up all of our uh, ventilation systems for for our buildings, and I, I think we showed in an earlier video that um, when we build rooms using the room builder, those rooms are going to be set up here in the uh, additional ventilation worksheet. So here's all of our rooms that we built. Uh, areas, volumes, as well as flow rates information. So fresh air ventilation flow rate information. Remember, we set that way back when, when we set the initial room information. Um, and, and I said, uh, back in that video, I said, you know, we're, the flow rates are coming in at default, which means 100% fan speed, 100% of the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Obviously not very... Um, uh, uh, believable. Uh, so we'll, we'll come back and set that in future videos. But for now, we'll, we'll sort of leave this as it is. And where I want to focus is, is down below on the actual ventilation air handling unit itself. So this guy here, the ventilation unit, the, the HRV unit itself, and the ducting for the unit, the, the, uh, the ducts that are going to be bringing fresh air in and taking the stale air out. So what do we see here? Well, we see our ventilation unit, and the ventilation unit it has a name, and it's going to have a heat recovery efficiency, a moisture recovery efficiency, a where do we have an electrical efficiency, and some frost protection items. So we're going to need to input some information here about our, our ventilation unit as we build this system. We're also going to have to input some information about the ducting down below. So the ducting has a size, an insulation thickness, uh, an insulation type and a length. So the, uh, the ducting, we're going to have to input some information around the ducting as well. So we need to build out a system that's able to supply all of this information to the PHPP. Now you can see a bunch of default information is being added to the PHPP already here. So this is a, a default system, which is already being built out, already being configured because we haven't given any explicit information. So how are we going to build out our system? Well, I'm going to come to the building type rollout here, and in the 01 model, I'm going to go down to this uh, third section, which is all about fresh air ventilation. So we have a whole bunch of components here, which are uh, for the purpose, which have been created for the purpose of um, uh, uh, configuring fresh air ventilation systems. And remember, the, the uh, sort of method we're going to use is we're going to create a new system, and then we're going to apply that system to a zone one or more zones. So if before we do this setting of the zone, let's create a new PHPP vent system. So I'm going to grab this component and drop this onto the canvas here. Let's zoom in so we can take a look at some of the inputs and outputs. So we're going to take in a system type, a system name, a ventilation unit, so an HRV or ERV, some ducting, and then we've got some other settings down here for frost protection and exterior. And then we're going to, exp and then we're going to um, output a ventilation system. So we're going to have a ventilation system as output. So we need some vent units to come in and some ducting to come in, and then we're going to uh, create a vent system uh, on, the, on the downhill side here. This system will then be applied to one or more zones. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's come back up here to O1, and I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to grab another component, this one called set zone vent system. So the set zone vent system does just that. It sets 
a honeybee's own ventilation system. So it's going to apply this system to one or more honeybee zones. So it's got an input for event system and an input for honeybee zones. I'm going to connect the ventilation system output to the ventilation system input. And notice this is going to work right out of the right out of the box here. We're going to have a default vent system configured it's going to look exactly like the vent system, which is already in our PHP. So it's the same default ventilation system. So until we give it some more information, it's just going to build that same default ventilation system over and over. But that's fine. Let's get everything rigged up together so we know it's all working. And then we can start to change some of the parameters and start to sort of flesh out some of the detail here. So all right, so we have a system. And we have, we have this little setter. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab my honeybee zones from the, the room builder. I'm going to pass that to the honeybee zone input on this setter. And then the output is a honeybee zone. And so now I'm going to pass that along to the next item in the chain. And so just like so many other components that we've seen here, this is one of these pass-through items where we take in the honeybee zones, we add some new information, we modify them in some way, and then we output the modified or adjusted honeybee zones and pass them on to the next thing. So that, that sort of process um, we've seen several times now in, in the, this tool set. That's how a lot of these things work, and it's certainly how many of these system components are going to work. We're gonna take in the zone, make some small modifications, and then output the zone. So OK, this is now all working, um, I think. Nothing has changed here, though. But again, this default ventilation system will look identical to the one that was already in the PHPP. And so we wouldn't know until we start to change something. So what, what do we want to change, first of all? Well, if we want to do a high performance building, maybe we want a really good ERV for our, our, our climate. Maybe we're in a dry winter or a hot, humid summer. So we want an ERV, which can do moisture recovery. And we want something that has better heat recovery than the standard 75%. So let's add a new ventilation unit to our scene here. So let me make some room so that we can input these. And I'm going to come up to 01 model, come down to the ventilation uh, section here. And I'm going to grab a new component called Create New PHPP Vent Unit. So I'm going to drop this onto the canvas. This is going to allow me to set some parameters for my ventilation unit. So I grab this, I drop it on here. Now there's not too many inputs, um, just the, the, the ones that we need in order to configure the system. And as output, we're going to have a vent unit. So the ventilation unit. If I was to take a look at the parameters of the vent unit, 75% uh, heat recovery, 0% moisture recovery, 0.45 watts per cubic meter per hour, uh, electrical efficiency. This is the same default unit that we've used everywhere else. So again, until we make some changes, we're not going to see anything get affected. But we can certainly make the connection here. So the vent unit will get connected to the vent unit. And now, let's just make sure this is working. Let's call this Ed's really great. Whoops. Uh, we'll, we'll call it, uh, what do I say? We'll call it Ed's really Good, come on, really good ERV, something like that. Maybe you would call it Zender Comfo Air 450. I don't, I'm going to call mine Ed's really good ERV. What kind of, and notice down here, we get our, our name updates. So our, our link, our, our link is working, our, our, our data is flowing through property properly. So what kind of e heat recovery would we have on a really good ERV? I don't know, 85% heat recovery. Sure. That would be a pretty good. That would be a pretty darn good uh, HRV or ERV or ERV rather. So that's great. So 85% heat recovery. Let's scroll over to the right here. Make sure that that updated. There we go. There's our 85% heat recovery. Notice we're still getting 0% uh, moisture recovery. If this is an ERV, it would have some ability to do moisture recovery. So let's say 60% um, moisture recovery. All right. We can never get quite as much moisture recovery as we can heat recovery on these units. Uh, so there's our 60% moisture recovery. What's the electrical efficiency? I don't know. Let's just leave it at 0.45 for now. Uh, uh, we could change it if we felt like it, but um, or if we knew. But let's leave it at that for now. So this is working. We, we've got our connection established, and um, we're, we've got our, our really good ERV now getting set inside of our um, inside of our PHPP. And of course, that's being um, that's also being loaded in our uh, uh, components worksheet. Here's our uh, it's really good ERV. Got these worksheets. There we go. Uh, Eighty five percent. Heat recovery, 60% moisture recovery, 0.45 watts, uh, watt hours per uh, cubic meter um, uh, uh, for electrical efficiency there. 
So we'll go back to our additional ventilation. So that's great. So that's all working. We've got a much better unit now. So let's take a look at our overall system efficiency. We have this 85% uh, efficient unit, but notice we've only got a 72% system efficiency. Why is that? Why, why, why do we have such a lower system efficiency? Well, the system efficiency takes into account both the unit and the ducting. So and the ducts that go along with the unit. So we need to add, we need to configure the ducting properly in order to get that, in order to boost that system efficiency back up to where it ought to be above 75% at least. So let's come down a little bit and we'll come down to where we enter the ducts. So these are the duct entries um, for the ventilation unit. So we're going to input the ducts and what are the relevant data points? Well, it's certainly the size, the level of insulation, the type of insulation, and the length. The length is probably going to be the most important one there. Well, level of insulation too. So let's build out, let's see how we can sort of set those back in our Rhino scene. So notice here that our system does have a couple of inputs for ducting. So I'm going to come back up to my O1 model and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find create new PHPP vent duct. So we have a whole component here which allows us to actually build a duct. So here's a duct and uh, without any inputs we are getting the default duct, five meters long, 104 millimeters, four inches wide, two inches of insulation, uh, 0.04 lambda value. Uh, that's the same default duct that's being used here in the PHPP already. So again, until we do any changes here, we won't see any, any updates. We can take the duct and connect it up to our system, that's fine, and it's now streaming through properly, but again, it's the exact same duct. So until we change something, we won't see any changes. So let's change something. Let's Let's double the insulation. We're, we're building a passive house here. We're going to make sure that our ducts are really well insulated. Four inches of insulation. There we go. There's our four inches of insulation flow through. Notice it only changed it on this one duct, though. There are two different ducts. And if we wanted to change both of them, certainly I could apply this t duct type to both of them. And notice down here that they'll both update or I can build a second duct which is probably what I'm going to want to do because we'll see in a second I'm going to have different lengths for the ducts uh, and in this case we would um, uh, be able to modify them here. And so we have a couple ducts in our vent unit all flowing through into our vent system which is again all flowing into our PHP uh, um, and, and all being outputted correctly. So what about the length of the ducts? The length of the ducts is certainly something which is important and a, a parameter that we want to input. So um, instead of five, let's maybe input 2.5 for the duct length. So I could put a number in, I could input a number, and that number will flow through and become the length of the duct. So that's one, way, that's one method. That's a perfectly valid method. Uh, it's absolutely a way that you could do it. You could sort of just measure these in the field or measure them on a plans or something. Um, that would be totally fine. I prefer to use the 3D geometry though, uh, and so I'm going to show an alternate method where we can actually reference in a curve, a, 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 a spline um, in, in, our, in our Rhino geometry there. So I'm going to delete this, and this will go back to default, and I'm going to shift over to my Rhino scene here, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually draw the ducts and then reference those in. So if you remember here, here's our funny little, uh, funny little house. We had, um, we had, what was this guy? This was our this stop it uh, this this one okay yeah so this one here was if we go take a look at the room data this we said this was going to be our kitchen and living room zone and this one here uh, this was going to be our mechanical room so we said this was our mechanical room so let's put the ERV in the mechanical room and we don't have to do this but just for visual clarity I like to sort of do this um, let's come in here and let's actually add in a just a little stand in for the piece of equipment and then we'll draw in the ducting so I'm going to come over here to my layers first of all remember we're using um, we're using pipelines to get the data uh, from the rhino scene into our geom into our grasshopper scene. So you have to be careful about what layers we're drawing on. So we definitely don't want to draw on the opaque envelope layer. So I'm actually going to make a new layer here. We'll call it systems. And I'll make a new sub layer. We'll call this the ERV system. Uh, let's capitalize that. And then eventually we'll have a domestic hot water system as well. But let me set that as my current layer. So now when I draw, it's not going to 
think that it's geometry or, or part of the building mass that I'm drawing. And so again, we don't have to do this, but just because I like to, uh, because it helps me, uh, let's uh, draw in some a little stand-in for our ERV. So maybe that's our ERV. Maybe we hung it on the wall. So it's hung on the wall there. And we now need to input the ducting for this little ERV. So let's say maybe I have one chunk of duct, which is going to come out the top of the ERV and run up to the ceiling. So it's going to run from the top of the ERV up to the ceiling. So we have a we have a, a curve now in our scene. Well, I could just take that curve and reference it in. I can pass a curve into this duct length parameter. And if I go take a look at my PHPP now, now notice here 0.7 meters. So the curve length was assessed automatically based on the 3D geometry. So I do not have to pass in a number. I don't even have to measure anything. Um, I mean, I could. I could come in here and say length and say 7 meters and then type in 0 0.7 meters. I could do that, but um, you know, this way is a little more flexible. And now if this curve changes, this length is going to update automatically. Right? So, uh, so that's um, helpful in many cases. So let me just um, do this. There we go. And let's do a second curve. Let's do a second uh, length of ducting. Any ERV or HRV is going to have uh, at least two sets of ducting. So let's say we got one duct that comes up, and let's say this one is actually going to run like 10 feet this direction before turning up to the ceiling. Right? If it's if it's a you know typical system, we have to let's join these together. If it's a typical system, we have to make sure that we have a good 10 foot separation between the duct ends to make sure we don't have cross contamination of the extract air coming back in. Um, so we have our second duct. Let me reference that one in, say set one curve, and then I'll take this duct and I'll pass this to my duct length input. And we come back to our PHPP and notice that length is now being calculated at 3.7 meters. So the 3D geometry is actually informing these and, and notice here as well, let me uh, adjust my scene a little bit. Try and adjust my scene. There we go. Adjust my scene a little bit here. Uh, da -da -da -da. If I was to let me do sub sub object selection, if I was to like make this much longer for some reason, notice that this number is going to jump to seven, right? So the 3D geometry is a you know it's a live connection there. Um, as we change the geometry, all the values in our PHPP are going to change. So let me just um, do a little, oops, a little um, clean up here, uh, just to keep things manageable as we go. Duct, there we go, and let me turn these off. Right, so here's our fresh air system, Oops. our fresh air system with our uh, ducts and our new ventilation unit. So there's our fresh air ventilation system with all of our, our ducts and our units there. So let's come back up and see what we have now for system efficiency. So our system efficiency now jumped up to 77%. So we went from 72 up to 77%. So it's pretty good. Um, uh, that definitely helps. And um, uh, you know, better than the, the five. And if we were to bring this back down, bring this back down to, you know, more like a 10 foot separation instead of a 20 foot separation, see that, oh, that bumped us up to 80%, right? So changing the length of those ducts is really meaningful. It, it, it changes the amount of heat loss pretty substantially on a small project like this. And it can make a big difference, um, both in terms of the output surface temperature, the air coming out of the HRV, um, as well as the overall heat loss, obviously. So um, I think we'll leave this one here. We'll, we, we certainly have more to say about our, um, our ventilation systems, but um, I think we'll leave this one here. Um, hopefully, hopefully that all made sense and you're, you're um, able to follow along and um, everything is working for you, for you in, your, in your project. Uh, when we come back in the next video, we will take a, a deeper dive into some of the flow rate questions. We'll start to, to, start to investigate the question of you know, how do we set the, the actual flow rates of these fresh air ventilation systems, and both in the Energy Plus and in the PHPP. So I uh, hope to see you back in the next, uh, the next video, um, and we'll pick up right where we left off here. All right. Thanks, everyone.